Hello, this is the family. Hope you're doing great. Welcome back if you are already from the family and hello if you're new here. Happy to have you. Just don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss any of the amazing things we have for you in store. Now getting into business. Well, in the previous videos on emulsions, we discussed what is this dosage form and how it is formed and the main instabilities that might be encountered with it. It's important now to look at how we can prepare emulsions. But we need to know what goes into the formulation first. That's why we will discuss the various excipients of the pharmaceutical emulsions today. I will assume by now you know the basic components that go into an emulsion, which are the two forming the phases of an emulsion, the aqueous and the non-aqueous phases, plus the one stabilizing this arrangement, the surfactant. So for the aqueous phase, water is used, and depending on the route of administration, different water types are considered. For the non-aqueous part, vegetable oils can be used. Also, the glycerides of fatty acids are an option, especially for topical emulsions or creams. Surfactants require a separate video or series in fact to talk about because there are many types of surfactants. Each type is suitable for a certain formulation type. So there are lots of details that go into there and also because other dosage forms require having surfactants in them. So we have come across one already, which is the suspension, and that makes surfactants a bit broad topic to cover here, but you know, it's a must-have component in emulsions. So till now we have the main components that you think of whenever you think of an emulsion. Now let's take a look at what can be added. Well, because we have an aqueous component, we might need to add a preservative. Also, the formulation might be intended for oral administration. And in this case, we prefer enhancing the palatability and mask any undesired taste with a flavoring agent. Relevant to the previous point, sweetener might be added as well. So three main components, plus a preservative, a flavoring and a sweetening agent. These are the components we have in an emulsion or might have in an emulsion so far. Also, an important one that we don't want to miss in this video is the antioxidant. And its importance is stem from that certain oil phases or certain oil phase classes are liable to oxidation, like vegetable oils. And thus, it's essential to include antioxidants that will preserve the oily phase and the emulsion in general. It's worth mentioning that not only the oil phase is liable to oxidation, the active ingredient might also be prone to oxidation. And that's why we need to determine which antioxidant we need to use and whether it's hydrophobic or hydrophilic, depending on the targeted component and its phase. The last component we will mention here is the viscosity modifier. We might add certain hydrophilic polymers to increase the viscosity of the external aqueous phase in an oily and water emulsion. That would improve the stability of the emulsion by decreasing the propensity of certain instability issues. Type in the comments what is the instability problem that can be resolved by increasing the emulsion viscosity. You can watch the instability issues video to know if you don't have it on the top of your head right now. So viscosity modifiers can be added to oil and water emulsions, but here again we have to maintain some balance because two viscous formulations will not be pourable to be administered orally, for example. And also the viscosity modifier, which is usually a hydrophilic polymer like methyl cellulose, 
how the tendency to form a multi-molecular layer around the droplets of the internal oil phase, and that should be taken into consideration, of course. So now you know eight components that can be in a pharmaceutical emulsion. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like it if you did, and share it with the ones that you know might be interested. Till next time, stay fabulous wherever you are.